Right, you lot. And in my time doing these video essays, I've done way too many on the MCU, mainly continuously defending its current state. Now please, save your breath, don't go right to the comments, because I'm not going to be doing that again. Because for every modern MCU project I actually enjoy, there is one that will infuriate me, and never has a film, probably in all my life, frustrated me, like Thor Love and Thunder. Now Thor is notorious for being the MCU's most inconsistent character. He's also known for his modern iterations being nothing like the comic, but that's um, a different video. His first two movies were just so dull and an absolute chore to get through. And his cave arc in Age of Ultron, my lord, was even worse. So I feel revamped in the character was necessary because it just, whatever they were doing with him was not working. I think even in the first Avengers, he was probably his, he was probably the weakest link in that film. And then came Taika Waititi. A director that is kind of someone that you either love him or hate him. He's known for his wacky humour style and that style does work. Look at something like Jojo Rabbit. It's an absolutely amazing film. But it was a risk. But Ragnarok really, really worked and everybody loved this more comedic style to four and everyone just was obsessed with this. However, the film knew what when to strip it back and the stuff with Hela and Odin and destruction of Adgard would give him the correct weight and Taika knew in that film how to tell back the jokes and although there were a lot of jokes it they found a way to balance that somehow and this more comedic fall continued into the Russo brothers Infinity War where his comedic banter with the Guardians worked so well to a point that the Russos even made him join the team by the end of Endgame he was just absolutely incredible in Infinity War, and probably the best he's ever been in the franchise. Talking of Endgame, I think I've got mixed opinions on 4 in that film. Yes, I get after facing what 4 went through, and he's got to be the most tragic character in the whole MCU. He lost every family member, his entire planet, and then failed to save half the universe. You could see why he'd become an alcoholic, but... Well, I feel other characters got really serious dives into their grief... When it came to Thor, his grief was played as a joke for most of the film. And I think when he eventually kind of turned around, it was good in the end. And the payoff at the end with him joining the Guardians made sense. But <laughs> I think it was a probably the one of the only flaws with a pretty perfect film in Endgame. And that gets us on to Love and Thunder. Now, in the build-up to this film, I saw a lot of people were really worried about it, actually. I think being focused on... I think the film being focused on Lady 4 made people worry. Although, on the contrary, many were actually really excited to see the Guardians in the film, and it was confirmed they would be in it. So, there was a bit of optimism, but there was also mixed feelings. In reality, Lady 4 was a supporting character to Chris Hemsworth and he was still the main deal in this film which was, didn't seem like it would be the case when the film was first taglined. Unfortunately though when the film finally came out reaction was poor from both critics and audience. The biggest and worst problem with this film, I know it's obvious but it has to be said, is the tone of the film. This film prioritises humour over everything else and well yes that was not pretty much the case with Ragnarok, to be honest the difference in this film is this film just isn't funny? <laughs> In the slightest, the, the humour is so childish and dumbed down that it feels almost Saturday morning cartoon. You've got things like screaming goats or floating heads or, you know, four getting all these clothes stripped off. Like, it's illumination humour at points. And the jokes are lazy and they're not funny. And they do kind of overstay their welcome, Some ga there's gags where there doesn't need to be a gag. I think Ragnarok knew how to tell a deep emotional story and also balance the humour. This one overstepped the mark. And the worst part about this is in Marvel's wackiest film, who do they make the villain? Probably the most serious villain they've ever had. Kristen Bells, I feel so bad for him in this film because he is absolute an absolute standout in this film as gore. He is probably the best element even though he is severely underutilized because he's threatening but then he's later sympathetic and he, honestly he deserved a way better film because Christian Bell gives everything to this role but he's not given enough screen time they and he's not taken as seriously 
I think there's bits in the film, especially when he kind of kidnaps Thor and, you know, his arc in the end is really lovely. I love the kind of the resolution it gets to, but you could have done so much more with such a character. Honest, that's the thing with this film. On paper, the story works. You know, the idea of Thor reconnecting with Jane and then dealing with gods and facing Gore only to lose Jane is... And get a child in the end. That's a good arc. And it's a good direction to take the character. And it really should work. But the issue with this film. And I hate to say that because I love this guy. Is Taika Waititi. I notice when you look at interviews. He looks like as if he's above us. He looks like he couldn't care. And I feel like his ego's really got to him in this film. And I think someone needed to be there to kind of step in and say. Okay Taika you're going too far here. I think it reminded me a lot of George Lucas in the prequels. Where... In the original trilogy, George Lucas had someone else direct and had someone else with him, kind of, okay, ten him when he'd gone too far. I think Taika needed somebody like that to really, um, focus him. Now let's go on about Lady Four. The thing that most people were worried about in this film, and... <laughs> funny enough, she was actually one of the better things about this film. I really buy Jane Foster as Lady Four. I think Natalie Portman did a really good job, and I think her cancer plotting was actually one of the things that was better well done. And I think it that was actually something that should have had a bit more weight to it, in my opinion. But she doesn't overshadow Four. She works alongside him, and it does feel natural. It doesn't feel like, oh, we're bringing Lady Four just for the sake of it. It does feel like... She's part of the story. And I think making it Jane Foster and already established character makes sense. But the problem is they, there's too much comedic stuff in here. It's not serious enough. I know Jane and Thor were quite boring in the first two. But I think I'd rather have Jane and Thor in the first two than what they did with them in here. And I think her sacrifice is incredible. But she did deserve better as well. Also, I do have to talk about the CGI. And... I do feel bad for VFX artists in these films because I feel like I do tend to stray away from critiquing the CGI too much because I feel like the CGI VFX artists are overworked and they're given too tight deadlines to work on and it's like they need to go on strike if anyone needs to because <laughs> a lot of it, a lot of the film just looks unfinished. <laughs> for that, there's some, people have memed the CGI stuff like the flowing head and stuff and CGI very rarely takes out of a film, but this was a film where I just, I could not ignore it, unfortunately. And it's not good enough for the budget that these films are given. And as for the Guardians of the Galaxy, what, what, what did they actually do? All that hype for nothing. Some members don't even get a line. It was fun to see them, but, like, that's about it. And I'm sorry, this film could have been so, so, so much better if Star-Lord got a conversation with Thor at the end about cancer, considering he lost his mum to cancer, for Christ's sake. That was such a missed opportunity for me. Like, that was, you know, <laughs> something they should have considered. And then let's talk about Valkyrie, because she does play a bigger role in this film. I actually did like her in this film, and I liked her in Ragnarok as well. And I mean... Yeah, the LGBT representation is nice, but it still feels a bit too small. Like, it still feels like, oh, we're just throwing it in so you can easily edit out for China. I think, like, if we're going to go there, you can't play both sides, Disney. And I felt they're trying too hard to, like, oh, we've still got to appease the Chinese market or Saudi Arabia, or whatever country that is a big money maker that don't, like, support LGBT. But then we all want to approve, like, the people who want it as well. Like, you, you've got to make a statement either way, I feel. And then as for Korg, I mean, I've never been more disappointed than when I found out he was still alive. I believe that says it all. He was clearly a Jar Jar Binks in this film. He was funny for, like, the little bits he was given in Ragnarok and Endgame, but this was an example of taking a sequel and giving a comedic relief. He was good in the first one. Too much to do. So, in summary, Love and Thunder is a, such a frustrating movie. I think it had all the seeds to be a strong entry into the MCU, but the director took certain elements way too far and just made unfunny jokes destroy what was a really good story. So, it has to be a 3 out of 10 for me. Love and Thunder should have been better, and that is why it frustrates me. I think Multivert Madness, I've done a video defending that, and I've actually, you know, Wakanda Forever was great, Guardians of the Galaxy 3 was great, Ant-Man was fine, in my opinion. Um, Fall of Thunder is definitely the low point for me. <laughs> Maybe Eternals, actually. But it's just frustrating. So, I think next week I've got my Disney 
vlog coming out. But a couple of my more comedy videos. I'm doing another Ed Sheeran ranking, and I'm going to be doing a video on Taylor Swift. You need to calm it down. Oh my god! And the next movie commentary video, I believe, I'm doing this Monsters University. I will die on the hill that that film is an underrated gem. Right, I'll see you next time. Goodbye a lot.